welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications. That lets YouTube know that we're doing the right thing. It costs you nothing and it helps us out a lot. So please go ahead and do that before we start this video. This video is brought to you by the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver plus bit set that you need to disassemble any electronics device, including your Xbox, your PlayStation, your Apple iPhone, MacBook, you name it. Links in the description box and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be fixing my loud PS3. The thermal paste on this thing hasn't been changed since 2011. And if you have a backwards compatible PS3 like this one, your thermal paste is going to be even older than that if you've never done a replacement. You're going to need some thermal paste, obviously, and our FastTech Pro Auto Kit or our FastTech Pro Tool Kit for this job. Links are going to be in the description box and the top comment. Even though I have every single system that anyone would ever want. I still come back to my PS3. Let's get started. So this is the PS3 that we're gonna be working on today. This is my personal PS3 backwards compatible model. This is a PS3 CECH A01 and you can check the model number at the back. If you have a CECH A00, you probably have an Asian console. If you have a 02 or 03, you're in a different country. The most important thing to look out for are the first five characters. So if you have a CECH A, this video is gonna be helpful for you when doing a thermal paste replacement. Also a CECH E01 or CECH E00 would also apply because the systems are almost identical. The main difference being the CECH A01 systems like these ones have hardware PS2 and PS1 compatibility while the CECH E01 only has software backwards compatibility. To start this assembly, we're gonna look at the bottom of the PS3 system. There's gonna be a sticker here that you're gonna have to remove. This sticker was already removed a long time ago. And then there's gonna be a rubber stop that hides a Torx T8H screw. And we're gonna remove this rubber stop. Normally there's a little pull tab on it, but in this case, it's gone and we have just a rubber piece that hides the screw. So I'm using this tool. Normally that wouldn't be necessary. You should be able to pull this piece out because there's a little handle on it that you can pull. Once you have that out, you're gonna see a Torx T8H screw hiding underneath. This is not a regular T8. A regular T8 is not gonna work. A T8H is what you need and what's part of our FastTech Pro Auto Kit and our FastTech Pro Tool Kit. As you can see, that our bit has a hole in it, which is gonna fit on that security screw inside. I'm gonna stick our screwdriver in here. And we sell this toolkit and the automatic version of it on our website. And you can go to fasttechstore.com and use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. So now that we have this screw out, as you can see, it's not a regular T8. It's got that little security bit in the middle. Once we have that off, we're gonna remove the cover by sliding it and it's gonna come off like that. Now I'm gonna switch to my FastTech Pro Auto Kit and I'm gonna switch to a Phillips bit because it's gonna make the disassembly process a lot quicker because this is an automatic kit. And we also sell this on our website as well.
Now we're going to lift up the top cover. It says to test. This system hasn't been worked on for about 10, 11, 12 years. I had my employee change the thermal paste on it all the way back in 2011. Some of the screws, like this one here, the screw's missing. That's not a good thing. I would go back in time and fire him if I could. But it's too late for that. That screw right there is missing. That's not good. Can't be messing around with the boss's system. I'm gonna remove the disk drive by lifting it up. There's a cable that runs underneath. This one here and then this one here. We're gonna lift up the clip. This is very easy to break, so be careful with this step and get the disk drive out of the way. Lots of dog hair and human hair accumulated over the years. Gonna remove these screws that hold the memory card holder. Lift, lift this cable up and out. This is the network module that controls your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's four screws that hold it in. Now we're gonna lift up this cable up like that. Lift up the board. There's a cable that runs underneath. We're gonna lift it. Piece of electrical tape because at some point I had an LED light set up in here. We're gonna remove the power supply. Gonna remove this cable here, lift up the power supply. I left the screws in there. Boom, screws are out. Get the screws out of the way. That's the power supply right there. This screw here is for grounding the power supply, in case you're wondering. At this point, we're gonna remove the hard drive. There's a cover that the hard drive hides under. I'm gonna lift it up. And there's a screw, it's also a Phillips. Now we're gonna slide the hard drive this way and then pull it out. I upgraded my hard drive a few years ago. This right here is a 160 gig. I think it's due for another upgrade, but that's for another video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to catch that one. We're going to remove the power button cable at the front. You just lift it out like that. And then we're going to remove these screws that hold the motherboard in. Two more screws here. Now we can get the motherboard assembly out. We can just lift up the back like this and it's gonna come right out. It's gonna separate from the rest of the system. Now we're gonna remove the back plate and we can do that by lifting up the clip here and then there's another one here now the back panel is free we're gonna flip it over 
remove the date and time battery. We're gonna pull the connector and it's gonna come off like that. Normally only the white piece is supposed to come off, but it, in this case, the off-white connector came off, but we can put it back in. That should not be a problem. Now we're gonna remove the connector for the fan. Pulling it out. There's two more screws here that we have to remove. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna remove these screws that hold the heat sink onto the motherboard. We're gonna need a manual screwdriver for this one. So I'm gonna switch to the regular Fastech Pro Toolkit and we're gonna switch to a bigger Phillips head, which is also included in our kit. get the clamp or the clamps rather out of the way we're gonna lift up this back plate like that I'm gonna flip it around on the other side lift up the heat the heat sink and the fan as you can see that's the old thermal paste it's arctic silver 5 it's held up pretty well considering how old it is. And that's the, the chips, the, CP, the CPU and the GPU. We're gonna get the plate out of the way, like that. And now we're gonna clean off the old thermal paste from the heat sink and the CPU and GPU chips. So we're gonna use some paper towels and wipe off the old paste. As you can see, it's discolored at the bottom. And that means that the thermal paste has exceeded its life. It's still not as dry as I would expect it to be after all these years. So it's held up fairly well, I would say. But it's time to go. Because this thing was getting loud. You can also use Arctic Clean for this step, which we do sell on our website. At this point, I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and spray the surface of the CPU and the GPU chip and the heat sink to really get that old paste off. And then we're gonna use another paper towel and just wipe it down. So we get any remnants of paste off. Out with the old, in with the new. So now that we have a clean surface to work with, now we can start applying the new thermal paste. And I can hear the comments section already where you guys are gonna say that these are IHSs and the actual chips are underneath. And you'd absolutely be right. And I would be doing that in another video in the future where I actually remove the IHS and replace the paste underneath. But, but you gotta subscribe for that one. And that's a much longer job I believe that me replacing just the thermal paste is gonna quiet the system down to where it needs to be. We're gonna be using Thermal Grizzly. We sell this on our website. 
and it comes with applicators. You don't have to buy a quantity this big, but I recommend that you do invest in these, especially if you're a repair shop. You would need a larger quantity, but we sell them in this large quantity and in a smaller quantity as well on our website at fasttechstore.com. Section of this video was lost because GoPro cameras are pieces of shits and they overheat constantly trying to do 4K. So I'm just basically taking out thermal paste and applying it. You don't wanna to apply too much or too little, just the right amount. You want, you want a nice coat on top of the chips but you don't want it to be too thick. Because if you put too much thermal paste, that's not good. And as I was mentioning, part of the video was lost because the GoPro camera decided to overheat and turn off while I was doing this. And before it would at least warn me that it was turning off, but it stopped doing that, I suspect because of a setting that was probably changed on its own or whatever. I'm never buying a GoPro product ever again in my life. I was better off doing these videos with my iPhones like I used to do them back in the day. I mean, they have headaches of their own, but at least they don't shut off while you're recording. So yeah, we're just applying a nice amount and you want to really push down the applicator really push it down on the surface What do you guys know about pink thermal paste? We got it. Fasttechstore.com. Real men put on pink thermal paste. So now that we have an even application on both surfaces, now I'm just gonna clean off any excess thermal paste on the sides. If there is some left behind, it's not that big of a deal because thermal paste is non-conductive. If you're doing liquid metal, then we would have to worry, but this stuff, not so much. Just the finishing touch here, make it even. It doesn't look the prettiest guys, I know, but once the heat sink is on, it will clean itself up. Now I'm gonna start reassembling this thing. Now we're gonna install the back plate on system I'm gonna install the battery connector just gonna push it down like this the wires the pins on the top go up top like that and now we're gonna flip it over install this back plate and there's teeth that go in like that here and then the back pivots on flip it back over again now we're going to attach the heat sink back on push it down connect the fan connector tuck it under here oem flip it over keep holding the heat sink so it doesn't fall out now we're gonna put the Phillips screws and the heat sink clamp back on.
I'm gonna tighten them diagonally. So we do one and then we do the other a little bit. And then back, back and forth. Because if you tighten one and tighten the other, you could put uneven pressure on the chip, which is not good. Make it nice and tight, but not enough where you strip the screw or you strip the screw while you're removing the heat sink. Now we're gonna flip it, flip it over again. And install these small screws. Flip it over again. Now we're gonna install the back plate. Goes on like this. And then the clips go over like that. And get, gonna give the case a good clean. That looks a lot better. Now we're gonna slide the front in first, like that. And then the back slides in. And notice how these are on top. We're gonna reconnect the power and eject button. Push it down. Now we're gonna reconnect all the screws that hold the motherboard in. This one here was missing. And we're gonna replace that. And these screws that I'm putting in, you guys will notice they're two different sizes, but the longer one in this case is the one that goes on the board. The shorter one is for power supply and network card. Just so you guys know. This screw goes in here. This was missing before, but I'm replacing it. So if you're watching this video and you have a system that you got serviced by us 10 years ago, if a screw's not in, it's not my fault. My, It's my employee's fault. I'm not gonna name them, but if you're watching, you know who you are. <laughs> As you guys can see, even the boss's system isn't safe from this laziness. Back then, I really didn't know what I was doing when I was hiring people. I was fairly young when I started this business. And I uh, started when I was 16. This guy was hired around the time I was 17, 18. I really didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> that's what happens, guys. You hire people that you shouldn't hire and screws go missing. Now we're gonna reinstall the hard drive. Slide it in like that. There's a blue screw that holds it in.
grounding screw. I'm going to reinstall the power supply connector. And then reinstall the screws. And these are shorter than the ones that go on the board. Who else is showing you these reassemblies in that much detail? Nobody. That's why you should hit that subscribe button. Now for the network module, this connector goes on top, then you push it down. You're gonna feel it click in. This cable is gonna connect in like this. You just push it in and all the way down. Goes in like this. Now we're gonna install the memory card slots. Connector goes in like this. And screws. Now the disk drive, connector is gonna be lifted up like that. Push the cable in all the way till the solid blue line and then push the connector down. Place the, place the disk drive in like that. Reconnect the power connector. Tuck this cable in here. And now we're gonna install the hard drive cover. And now the case is gonna go back on. Front goes on first like that. Line it up. Push this cable down here. Make sure these cables don't go in the way. Cause otherwise they will, if you don't tuck them in as I did. Push down, make sure that everything's flush, which it is. Cause I've done this like, I don't know, 10,000 times. We're gonna put all the screws back in, the long ones. Go here, 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 and here. And the short screw goes in here. It's labeled S. Short one goes in the corner. Now we're gonna put this piece back in, which goes in here because it holds the security screw 
in place. We're going to put the case on right about here. As you can see, it's not exactly on. We're going to put it right about here and it's going to sit. And now we're going to tighten the screw. This is going to be tricky to get the first time you do this. I promise you, but eventually you'll get it right. Torx T8H back in our toolkit. Now I'm just going to tighten the screw, tighten it all the way. My bit stuck in there, get that out. And now we're going to put the rubber stop back in. It goes in like this. Hopefully yours is in better shape. And now the job's done. The thermal paste has been replaced. Now I'm going to test the console and show you guys the results. So now the PS3 is plugged in and we're going to do an audio test using a Rode microphone. And we used the same mic before on the PS3. And this is what it sounded like before. And this is what it sounds like now. The system has been running for a few hours, running kill zone. And normally by this time it would be running really loud as you saw in the previous clip. Now we're gonna use the thermal cam to get a visual reading and also a, an exact temperature reading of the air that's being blown out from the back and the side. Here's a view with our FLIR 1 thermal cam after the thermal paste replacement. And as you can see in the middle of the system is showing a reading of 28 to 29. It was 34 degrees before. So that's a drop. Let's see the air coming out at the back. About 37, 38, and about 38, 39 from the top of the system. And I think it was 42 before. So that is a significant drop. Now you might think that's a couple of degrees, but that makes a huge difference. Sounds a lot quieter, as you heard with the Rode audio mic test. And the temperatures prove that it's running cooler. Thanks for watching another video from Fast Tech. Don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Press the bell next to the subscribe button if you wanna get notifications. And check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. I promise you won't be disappointed. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.